Hey guys, I uh, just thought I'd do a long form video of a particular handpiece which I know is not good. <laughs> it's really uh, gone to the extreme of being really stuffed and just to show what can happen. Now this guy that's given me this handpiece is a friend of mine and he's a farmer and he just crutches and crutches and crutches with this thing. And um, generally when they use these sorts of handpieces um, on the crutching machine they hang them up like that and then all the dirt's going down inside the um, inside the fork and the race and starts wearing everything out so this was a good example of what can happen to a handpiece when it's in that situation there's a lot of crutching trailers in that around now that are like got the same sort of system where you hang them up or um, they'll just keep them running so they'll just keep running and running and running and they're not getting oiled. So they could run for half an hour con consistently without even a stop, just crutching sheep in uh, sheep handling machines and stuff like that. So this is what can happen to them. Okay, the first thing I will look at is, I'll turn it over and I'll have a look at the chicken feet. You can see here, it's rubbing all the way back here. There's not even meant to be a rub mark there. So that's just showing you that these uh, chicken feet are absolutely gone. That's really sharp. And you can see there's hardly any pin left there. Um, next thing is I'll turn it over and then I'll just give it that. If you haven't uh, watched our videos before on how to check this stuff in the shed, is you just grab the fork and just move it forward and back like that. Now look at the movement we've got. Now if that was a new handpiece, there's nothing. So there's a lot of movement there. And then the third thing I'd do is undo the tension nut and just to see whether the pin and sleeve is really worn out. So I'll just take that out. And oh, so the whole tension nut bushing screw, which is what this is called, is jammed in there. Now that's caused by one, not getting tension. So you can see that the pin here is actually round, not good. Um, so what happens is when you get no tension uh, You screw the tension nut down hard 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 now This has gone all the way down as far as it can go and then got extremely tight and then it's undone This bushing screw here. They're only held in there by Loctite So if you go too far and it's too hard, it'll actually undo that which is what's happened So this is going to be an interesting uh, fix up. I think So to try and get this out is going to take some work um, we're going to need some nylon or something here to be able to grab that because if you use anything like pliers or whatever you'll just damage the thread and then yeah then it's totally buggered um, so I'm going to have to try and get some nylon I can't jam something in here because the actual sleeve if you can see that the, the tension sleeve is inside and that's spinning if I can get that out I might be able to jam something in there and try and undo it but this is uh, the first step I guess Okay, I've got that out. This is how I did it. I just jammed some old plastic in there with a, I don't know, an extension. Jammed it in there and it was actually suctioned in there with all the oil on that in there. So she took a bit to pull out, but uh, we've got her out. Uh, the next step is to try and jam something in this part, very similar to what I've just done here. And uh, see if we can undo that. Well, I finally got that. Uh, just used a vise with some uh, nylon in the vise and, and held that so we've got that and we're undoing that out now so we're getting somewhere okay so we've got it out as you can see in the tension nut it's got a nice bit of a wear spot there but by the time we uh, finish this we can still get away with using that and there's the the old thing it's pretty cruddy but we'll clean that up nicely okay next step Take this all cap out. I don't know if any of you guys have seen these, but these are in a magnetic bowl. See that? You can just have your stuff there, put all your parts in there, and you don't lose them. And then when you're done, you can stick them up on the wall. So these are a good thing. I think we got these from Repco or something. Probably worth doing if you've um, if you're going to do some handpiece parts and that, just so you don't lose everything. Keep them all in spot, and if you knock something over it all stays in there except for the rubber cap 
but I will put that in there anyway. Okay, next thing, we're gonna pull the back joint out, so we'll, we'll take the uh, ferrule off, if I can. Yep, it's nice and loose, it's easy. So the old trick, if you've watched uh, my other videos, just jam up the uh, fork with a screwdriver, jam up the cogs, and we're gonna go pull. There we go, that cog there is undone. And then we're going to use, um, we've got three screwdrivers. We're going to keep them jammed up. We're just going to use the set of shifters. As you can see, it's a pin driver. So it's sitting on a flexi drive all the time, this one. So that's why I know it's um, done a lot of crutching. Those that have got flexi drives and using worm drives, not ideal if, uh, you know, you're working outside in the yards because you'll find that the... Um, worm drive will f uh, fall off all the time and then you'll be Your drive or your flexi will be in the dirt Not ideal so pin drive and the reason you can still use pin drive is Because Heinegger has the safety switch in them so that if it does lock up It's not going to affect the pin drive and it won't keep running Okay, so we've pulled the cogs out uh, considering how bad some of this other stuff seems to look like the cogs are they're shot but they're, they haven't locked up or anything yet so that's a good sign okay so now that those those are out I can just pull the back joint out there we go oh now that's telling me the bearing is absolutely shot good way to tell um, if everything's buggered like if you have a look at this look at Everything's just, <laughs> that is shocking. Um, that bearing is actually not even running. That is, well, that's probably one of the worst I've ever seen. That's nearly touching the side of the barrel. Jeez. Okay, so we're gonna take the fork and stuff out now. Um, just to get these pins out, there's a little ledge just in here. You can actually use your thumbnail and pop them out like that. Now the only thing that's holding that fork in now is this screw, it's called the fork safety screw which only allows it to go up so high but because this post and cup I'm guessing is extremely worn out, there's a lot more movement than normal. So we'll just open uh, or undo this screw which is nice and loose which is good. Try not to over tighten these because when they're stuck, um, if you don't know the little tricks of the trade, you won't be able to get them out and you'll ruin the screw and then it's really hard to get them out. So that's all it is. A little screw like that. Now the whole lot will come out. The ball and race, everything. We just lift it up over the post and pull it all out. Give it a jiggle. So the ball's still in there somewhere. There it is. Now I'm going to turn this over. Wow, I don't know if you can see that correctly. But that's almost worn out the whole cup and almost resting on the, the fork itself. Uh, turn it over here. Ooh. Right, so you can see this. So this, um, which is generally what happens with um, these sort of hand pieces when they're on out in the yards. I don't know if you can see that properly but it's actually gouged out uh, the, the lighting's not over good. Oh, you can see it there. You can see where the ball has just been smashed down in here. And the same thing will be up on that side, on the top. You can see it there, like unbelievable. So not only is all the other parts buggered, but so is the fork. Now to replace a fork, you're looking at around $180 just for the bare bones of the fork. So, uh, it's just lucky I'll have a second hand one I can sell him and you see the difference so if we put those together a lot more steel look at that completely different now this is really sharp that's sharp there this hand piece I don't know how he was using it but it's probably uh, it's pretty pretty close I've seen worse in the post and cut but this one is one of the worst you'll see. 
anyway so we'll do that we'll swap that over and then the chicken feet as you can see here um, the chicken feet are actually looking like they're shooting upwards now so that meant to go out to a pin and down well that's shooting up because and then all the pressure on the cutter is back here now where we need it on the tip so it wouldn't have been cutting overly well it wouldn't have ran well at all no wonder he rang me and uh and i think this is only from a season or two so he does a lot of crutching and a lot of sand in his area um so that'll do it every time but yeah there's a lot of oil in there so he's obviously oiled it so it just doesn't matter what happens is if there's sand in there that's what's going to happen all right so we're going to take take the center post out now this will be interesting here we go Ooh. just give that a clean look at the shape of it so for those that don't know that's meant to be round <laughs> definitely not round and so what's happening with it is it's sitting like that and all the pressure's on the back part of it, like that, and it's just worn the back end of the post off. Um, so what happens is now, we've got a big hole in the cup here, plus the post is worn, so what happens is the whole lot drops down in the uh, in the barrel of the handpiece, and then the fork or the ball is gonna run on a different angle because of all that dropping down like that, and then the the ball will run on different spots in the race and then it won't run smooth definitely won't run smooth and more than likely won't cut real good and like in my previous videos that i've pointed out before is that when you load your handpiece and uh, you put your comb and cutter on here and you screw your tension up and if you see your cutter move forward as you're doing the tension up that means this has a lot of room to move so then that's all worn out. So if you've got movement when you do your, your cutter up and your cutter wants to slide forward towards the tip of the comb, this is worn out. First sign, straight away. So that's handy to know when you're in the shed and um, you notice it and go, ooh, I remember that video. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take the bearings out. We've just got a seal here. Try not to use these screwdrivers because they're quite fat and you'll damage your seal. Um, especially if you're not changing your bearings. There is a spot in between the circlip. There you go. There's a little gap there. So it goes from there, you run it around, boom, and it pops in there. Pops out really easy. So that can go there. I still can't believe that. <laughs> um, okay, so then we get our, our circlip pliers, which come in the Heinegger kit. We just line it up here. Try and get the holes, if I can see. There we go. This might be a hard one to get, so I may because it's because it's so buggered. And it's really tight too, which is unusual. So I've pretty much got it out. Um, what what can happen sometimes is the sleeve inside here uh, can get pushed up against the circlip and make it really tight. So something like this has been rattling around so far it's made this the sleeve push back really hard on this one and uh, the circlip stuck so we got it though we buy um, a bit of a trade secret how to get that fixed it keeps slipping out You're pretty jammed in there though there we go now that one there is buggered. Get rid of that. You can see it's bent. So we need to make sure we put the new one in. Next step is uh, using our punch, which you get in the kit. So down inside the, the barrel, you'll see the crank head. There's a little uh, hole where this punch goes into. And we just hold it like that. start knocking make sure it stays in that hole in the in the crank 
that is really tight. Wow. This thing's had a hard life. It's still not even moving. There we go. That was one of the harder ones I've had to knock out. Okay, here we go. So this is the sleeve. So it's basically a spacer between um, the circlip and uh, the front bearing. So you have the sleeve that comes off. Then you have what they call the wave washer. You'll, you'll know it's the wave washer because it's wavy. And then you have the bearing. Have a look at that. Unbelievable. <laughs> and it's just not even, doesn't even feel like a bearing anymore. It just feels like steel. On steel on steel. Okay, so in your kit, you have one of these. So this is where the, the uh, crank head goes into. And then you'll have this one. So one end's got a big end. The other end's smaller and it's got a thread inside. The thread goes over the crank and it screws on like this. Now, it pays to uh, get a you know a bit of wood or something one thing you should be using is nylon hammers don't use steel hammers you will wreck all your tools you just round them all off and then nothing fits into anything and two um, uh, wood doesn't give it such a hard impact there is times when we need either cement or a steel anvil or something but this time we won't we can do it like this which I'll do for this purpose there we go. Oh, look at that. It's just exploded the bearing. That is unbelievable. <laughs> I've never had that before. <laughs> As you can see, they are a double row bearing. Holy moly. Very interesting. So that's going to take a bit of getting off now. So um, I've done this before. Best way to do it is I'll rip these um, bearings down and out and off and heat that up and that'll just slide off easy so when, if you heat that up um, this part here expands and then is easier to slip down so I'll uh, have to do that uh, so as you can see I've taken all the the bearing and yeah so here's all the, the what they call the seals which holds all the or meant to hold all the grease in you can see that's fried it's all broken apart there's the guard so that's in behind the seals holds them and there's your little bearings so basically when you can see the bearings there the holders are really really loose too so that's where you get that um, up and down movement with your with your bearing and um, they are a double row so um, sitting like that just full of grease uh, crank goes through there. That's basically it. Now that's how bad it is. That bearing's just falling out. One of those little. Put that in there. Yeah. So very unusual. These bearings are pretty well made. They're expensive, but pretty well made. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. There's the outer casing. And have a look at that. It's actually cracked. I've never seen that before. Never seen that. So we're all learning something today. Unbelievable. Okay, I better get to heating this other part and uh, get that off. Okay, got that off. Used uh, just a blowtorch. That part's in the bin. Okay, here we go. Um, next. What do we got? Okay, the back joint. So we have a look at the back joint. We've got sideways movement, so I'm just pulling like this um, one thing about this the back joint is actually in good condition because the hinges are quite thick so that's good so there's a lot of um, what do you call it a lot of thickness there to be able to keep uh, to rebuild this back joint it's not a big job I'm guessing the bearings are shot um, best way to tell you grab your pin drive or your worm drive clean that up put it in the bearing and we give it a wiggle this one shot so what you do is you give it a wiggle that's not all you do you give it a spin 
and when you spin it you want to push down and spin at the same time and that feels really crunchy like it's not smooth at all all right that's usually the better one out of the two this one's generally the worst huh it's going to make a liar of me but still pushing down it's still crunchy um, doesn't have as much play it's got a bit there but it's still a bit crunchy so that's obviously ran out of grease and and kept running so uh, best way to tell is that so we're going to take the back joint apart best way is to get your screwdriver grab those parts like that and squeeze and then we're going up like that so get it underneath that spring up like that and then push forward same on this side get it underneath and then push forward they can be quite tricky if you haven't done many and if they're like this one they, I think they've worn a groove in there as well so we're getting that up there we go then we just go round and then slide him out caps as you can see uh, we'll be able to show you as we install the other parts how the difference in thickness here these are quite thin very thin here so um, that's where the play comes in as well they've thinned out to where they used to be um, so throw them in there look at this one oh it's got a big dent in it this poor hand piece <laughs> okay now the back joint cover just slide that over there and then unclip it there and then it will just all come off and then we're left with just the bare back joint and you just close pull that's it you can't put them in like here you can't put them back they've got to be right back over this way where are we line them up and then down so it can only go on one one spot okay let's take that off so we're going to knock those bearings out very simple it's just this this part you punch that's what this ledge is for um that's just to slide in there try and keep it clean because um, all the grit net this can jam in there a bit and uh, let's grab my hammer and you can hold it like this they're not that hard to get out but this one is of course because everything else is shocking so I'm just going to use my bit of wood okay so got the bearing out of this one it's in uh, here it is that was hard and you can see it was hard to get in it's got some nice yeah, scratch marks in there, which shouldn't really be. That was one of the harder ones I've had to take out. We'll see how we go with this one. We have the punch. See if I can do it here. You can hear it. it changes the sound. And there we go. With all the yuck. This is why, this is one reason. <laughs> if you guys want to get your hand pieces rebuilt, and uh, sometimes people want them pretty quick, we'll have to spend... 10-15 minutes just cleaning them so hence why we we charge a little bit to do it because sometimes we get them in like that is just not ideal for me to work with so I'll have to clean all this in a minute once we've ripped it all apart um, so obviously with this fork now um, we're not going to use any of this we're just going to use this other second hand one here so that's going to be thrown in the bin and never to be seen again so goodbye so I won't have to show you how to take these fittings out, but I could show you quickly which way they come out. So uh, generally, in your kit, if you have the Heinegger kit, you get one of these as well. This is basically to sit on top like that, okay? So if I was to knock this uh, cup out, I wouldn't recommend using uh, your, your uh, thing there. I would use what I have here I have an old worm drive that's buggered as you can see it's there's nothing left of that really that'll break soon so I just use this as a punch very good hardened steel good length to hold properly and you hold it like that bang now this is the time this is what I use I use a steel hammer this is probably the only time you really need to use a steel hammer not so much for the the cups but these the tension pin cups can be so hard ask uh, ask my son when he's trying to 
take these out he loves it not so this is how it works so the cup goes like that you bang down on the cup the tension pin cup we go upside down and we're knocking it down now a lot of people think that this because it has that slot there that it's actually screwdriver well it's it probably fits but it's not you'll never undo that with screwdriver that it's jammed in there very well and these are pressed in uh in the factory but uh very hard to knock out and that groove is just for your tension pin retaining spring so that little spring there and, and those of you who probably don't have those you really need those because one day your pin will come out and sit on the side of your fork when you're not ready and you'll pull it into gear and it'll lock up so pretty simple i think it costs you four dollars to get one of these might cost you fifteen dollars just to have one fitted if we did it so it doesn't take me long but if you're doing it yourself and you haven't done it before it can probably take you a fair bit longer than what you probably like okay so now i've got the bearings out of the back joint as you can see it nice and thick uh, i might be able to show you in in a minute uh ones that aren't and no good so but we're going to just put these get the air, air compressor blow it all out uh back joint cover look i'm gonna pull all this crap out um all these this the only parts that are any good in here is sleeve and his pin drives okay and tension nut and your screw and your oil cap that's the only thing that we're keeping out of all that so that will go into a massive pile which i have of um heinegger parts i don't think i can even lift the box it's that big so that's our that's my next bet so i'll come back when they're all cleaned up yeah so i'm up to clean the barrel i've got that cleaned out pretty well gone in there with a rag cleaned all inside the back but in here we've got to get rid of all this oily residue so that we can um, put uh, the tension nut bushing screw back in and lock tight it whereas so if it's too oily the lock tight won't uh, take so what we're going to use is um, brake cleaner just cheap old brake cleaner because what it does is dries with no residue so it gets rid of uh, oily surfaces there's a couple other things you can use. I know I'm making a mess here, but I'm doing it just for the camera. So clean that up and uh, give it a rag. Just give that a bit of a clean. It's looking better already. And then I'll just give it another whirl like that. And I'll just let that dry. Now that dries within 30 seconds. And then it's, it eats away all the residue. So hopefully all the residue is down on the um, bench here. Okay, so you can probably see on the actual thread here, it's quite dry now. So the brake cleaner has done its thing. I've just given it a bit of a, a uh, blowout with the air compressor as well. And in here especially, it looks really, really dry. May not show up on camera very well, but... I can assure you it's dry so that's that's good now we're going to use what I uh, use here is just a thread locker and we're just going to put that around that thread there uh, screw it in as tight as possible and uh, yeah see if uh, we can let you gotta let that set for a little bit um, but not too long but uh, should be fine after this is all rebuilt so he doesn't have to screw the tension right down to nothing Okay, we'll give that a bit of a shake. Doesn't get used very often, so it's a good idea to just give it a shake up. Okay, don't put it on the wrong thread. So the thread's a lot more coarser. We don't need heaps. It just needs to go into the threads, but I'll do a bit extra for this one just because it needs to get down there and it's come out once before. Okay, we just screw that on there. All going well. There we go. Now 
Now I'll just get some moldy grips if I can. What I might do first, before that, I'll take this um, tension spring out. Pretty simple process. And then just flick it all around. There you go. Just remember these go on one way, one way only. Um, if you put it on the wrong way, you will feel that you won't get tension uh, one way and it'll be hard to undo. Okay. So we're not going overly hard on this. Set these. Now you'll see there's actually a flat spot on the things there where the spring goes. I'm just going to hook onto that. And just go lightly. There you go. That's as tight as you want to get it. There probably is a tool for that, but um, you don't need it very much because that doesn't happen very often. Okay. That over there. Okay, so she's on nice and tight. Um, we'll have a look at the spring because I can put that back on now. Out of all the, the things on this handpiece, the spring is in good order. So generally when they've worn out, they've worn a nice big flat spot around near that hook spot there. And, you know, that could be half the thickness. It's just from undoing and doing up of the tension. It's just rubbing on there all the time. So what it does is when it undoes, it rubs on here and forces the spring. When you do it up, it goes in like that. And when you undo it, it wants to go like that. Okay, so and that just spreads a little bit just to make it easy so it doesn't undo or doesn't let your tension undo. Um, just one thing, it is a what they call a safety part of the handpiece, so really you shouldn't be taking these out. And if you can't feel your tension properly, a couple of things could be the issue. One is grinding isn't quite right or um, you've got worn parts like just like this one. Uh, or inside your tension nut, which generally can fill up with grit and grime in there, and the thread. So the thread inside here and also on here. If you could take that off once a day and get a wire brush and just wire brush your thread here, and give that a clean out with some. You could use you could use brake cleaner, or even inox, anything like that, just to spray it out and let, just let all the gunk and that come out that will make your tension work 10 times better and the last thing that could be is the tension sleeve there's that in there somewhere i don't know where i put it um tension sleeve that needs to be free and here we go that's over here that needs to be able to spin and move up and down freely if that's jammed with grip you won't feel your tension and then you'll be carrying on what's going on it's the handpieces fault and that but generally it's not now, a lot of the times with handpieces unless they're worn like this there's not a lot that can go wrong with them unless they haven't been maintained so i say if your grinding's correct you've maintained your handpiece regularly then you won't have any issues with um with your handpiece so these are little things to check out that's the only thing that um people sort of don't realize because it's not something we're shown really but that's that really needs to be free and, and loose in there with lubrication so some really light oil or inox something like that okay okay so as you probably seen I haven't haven't come across many things that I haven't seen before but this one's a good one um, you're always learning you never know you never know everything ever um, what we're gonna do now is just go through the parts I'll just grab those now we're just going to use a Heinegger long repair kit I like using genuine parts for this part of the um, handpiece because they are the best they fit great and you can set them really easy. Um, we're gonna go with uh, back joint caps and new spring so that we don't have that sideways movement. 
we're going to go with and that's all genuine genuine Heinegger chicken feet definitely needs to be done and but this farmer wants to save as much as he can because obviously in this time it's pretty tough for sheep prices at the moment so he wants we're just going to put in an aftermarket bearing kit which it fits fine um, Heinegger's are great as well so either way it's totally up to yourself and I understand um, how the eco economic times are at the moment so we're trying to save every cent um, I just use a an old comb and we just undo those there so we just get that ready and then we'll get the the long repair kit open this one's been running around in a reps car for a while as you can tell <laughs> it's a bit grubby use that I can open it they don't make it easy there we go okay you'll see all the parts in here so the long repair kit comes with cogs and um, you get a free nut and a ball a new ball which is the difference between a short repair kit and the long is the cogs nut and ball um, so first of all we're going to put in our center post cup uh, where's the old one you can see the difference in the thickness of it that's you can see the wear joint or wear part down here Let's see if we can get a better angle of it so that shot that's how much it's worn through it's probably over halfway through that so it's a lot of metal on metal for a, a long period of time now I'm just going to use my old trusty bit of wood here which you can see has been smashed over the years here's your little rest tool rest it on there put your your cup in there and just make sure that inside these holes or where the fittings go is clean because they can pop out now I don't normally bang stuff on here but we'll do it just for the video there we go you want it flush or it can be just above but you can tell it's in tight enough you can give it a push it's never going to come out and the same with um, this is the tension pin cup and spring so there's your tension pin cup it's got a little groove and there's that groove there it's for this spring a little hook and the little hook goes in there and then the spring goes into that groove great idea whoever thought of that it's probably been around for 100 years but it's a good idea now these, like I said earlier, this is all just pushed in. Right, now the other thing we need to do is make sure that this is dead straight. So if you look behind, we're going to look at the line that's in there. Is going straight through. That looks very straight to me. Right. Give that a good whack just to set it check it again because they can move if you hit them on a, on a funny angle or something and then you give them a good couple of good wax okay that looks pretty good to me you can see that looks nice and straight turn it over the lines nice and straight through the through the middle and the springs in there perfectly so that's done you can see it's not all the way down that's okay as long as it's jammed in there and it can't move okay easy okay that that's all done now what I do now is I'll fit the chicken feet same thing get an old comb and this takes a lot of my time opening little packets all the time Put it in the bin now this is what the grease over here is for I'll dip that in there now make sure when you put these in that the pin is on the outside okay good idea just run around like that and give it a good few spins to make sure now this must be loose like this I've seen uh, and it happened to be a one of uh, Shearer trainers a few years ago he couldn't get a cut with his handpiece and um, a Heinegger rep had done something 
and I'm not sure what he sprayed on it or used what sort of grease but the grease had gone off and the, and the chicken feet were absolutely stuck in one spot on that angle so you got that angle and you got that angle they'll stuck out like that so this part of the chicken feet wasn't touching the middle teeth and he wasn't getting a cut in the middle of his um, cutters and then once I noticed that we changed it over just lubricated them back up made them and it just changed the handpiece all together so just something so simple and the right using the right grease so it doesn't really matter how much but they should be changed or checked you should check them every day but they should be changed and put re greased every day or every second day you can use um, oil just take it off and use oil that's fine as long as they can do that give it a couple of spins beautiful and free now now the leftovers I just go a bit in there so when they we put the spring in there and we put a bit in the in the cup so when the post goes in it pushes the grease up there and I just put a, a really light smearing in here in the ball race and that's set to go right so we can put that aside now and then we'll start uh, building up the back joint Okay, so we've got the, um, this is the handpiece side of the back joint. Now we've got the two outer bearings, which are a double, a double row as well. Um, now this little tool, where is it gone? Here. This tool here, not only is it just for sitting the fork on and getting the other parts out, but it's used to put the bearing in, because you see it's the same size. So it sits on the outer casing so that never put a bearing on uh, through the middle without anything pushing on here so like you would if you're going to put the the front bearing on a on the uh, barrel on the sorry the crank wherever the crank is here it is our little tool which with the thread that's the thread end this is the other end and that slides down there it's taking all the pressure there if I was to use this tool and bang it down that's going to damage the inside of that bearing straight away because it takes a bit of force to knock them down on there and if you're pushing from the outside it's going to push the middle out and then your bearings buggered before you even start using it so make sure you have the right tools for, for putting bearings on for sure okay so we've got the bearing it's nice and clean in there now we're just going to sit the bearing in like that and just sit it flush beautiful as well as we can now we get our little tool now it's not ideal for me to do that here but I'll give you an idea um, that's how we do it we get it on we tap it so it gets flat so that's just slightly uh, taken in there but it's not um, what do you call it it's not seated obviously it's miles away but I need to go over to my other part and just belt that down and get it flush make sure very 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 important that you actually hit these all the way down till you feel that it can't go any further because if you don't hit these far enough in you'll have what they call bind up and it binds everything up and you won't be able to use your handpiece you will have no turning okay so just a little tip there okay so we've just seated that one as you can see there's not a lot sticking out and uh, I'll just have to go through and do the next one same same deal make sure it's clean inside sit it there nice just push it just a touch I'm just gonna seat it a little bit and then I'll do the same thing over on the other bench okay all done so that's now sealed, uh, seated correctly, down hard. That's all there is to it. Now the next part for the back joint, we make sure it's clean so we get the rags out. Clean those hinges right up. This is really important. It'll save you a lot of, you know, you can rebuild a, a handpiece two or three times. As long as this back joint's in reasonable condition, we can keep rebuilding long as that as long as your fork isn't like this one <laughs> but we can keep rebuilding this and the best way to to be able to do that is keep everything so it's lubricated so what i do is i get the grease I just put a bit on each hinge 
So this is what happens when I do a rebuild of anyone's handpiece. It's just what happens. Right, oh, look at that. That is beautiful and smooth now. Get the excess off. That will last a long time. Now, it's not... I remember back in my early shearing career and Sunbeam used to say you need to change your back joint uh, grease once a week. While in theory that's great, um, in, uh, in actual fact it's probably not good because what you're doing is undoing undoing your spring so many times and every time you undo it it's just losing tension losing tension and it gets looser and looser and looser if you do it like we've just done there that grease will last for a long time i've never pulled a handpiece apart and pulled the caps out and if we have a look at the caps in here haven't even looked at them you see that they're still very oily greasy in that so there's still oil and grease that's in there all the time. I've never seen as long as you oil your hinges here. So with everything's back together, you got your back joint cap on, uh, cover on, and your oil. You just oil right across and your cogs, and that just keeps the oil dribbling down into here and keeps them in good nick. It's when you don't oil these hinges at all um, that's when they start wearing because yeah, that may take I don't know, it may take couple of years for that to wear right out but i've seen them wear out in less than a year from people just not oiling anything especially cogs so if the cogs get oiled at least and you can put a lot on there when they spin that spits the oil out and goes out in through into your hinges so at least put enough oil on your cogs to um to help with that okay now i'm going to get the back joint cover people get um tricked on which way they go easy so the bit that's got the long part goes forward and the part that's the fattest end goes on first like that there we go now we need our caps so we'll undo these out of the packets okay we've got them undone as you can see beautiful new uh nowhere if you have a look here looks completely different <laughs> And you can see on this old one, it's starting to groove uh, in here where the spring's been running the whole time. So this part, this round area here gets smaller and then slops around in the spring here. So that's, uh, that's another issue. So all these little things add up. So if you don't look after these parts or replace them, then yeah, it's not, not ideal. Okay, so next thing I do is I fill, well, three quarters fill these with grease. So I've got that. One there. Now we put grease into the parts that um, you don't generally get grit into because otherwise if you use grease in the, on spots where, um, where it's open to all the dirt and grime coming in, then it will turn into a grinding place and waste everything away twice as quick. But these places generally don't see any um, dirt inside them, as you can see. The original grease is still on the ends in, in that cup there, and the rest is just oil, so, and it's clean. Oily colour, but it's clean. There's no grit in there. So the only reason I put um, grease on those parts when I, like the fork and in here, it's just in case when someone takes uh, takes their takes delivery of their handpiece after I've rebuilt them. It's um, same as when Heineken send them out brand new. All these parts have grease in them. It's because to stop the, well, what do you say, the idiot factor. People buy these and just use them and don't oil them. Simple as that. So if we grease them at least, it's got some protection for a while for people that don't oil them. So that's why I do it. It's just more of a make sure that, that everything's right. Okay, so we're gonna put the caps on and you'll find the grease, I'm just pushing down and the grease is forcing through into the hinge, which is good. Same on this side. Okay, then we get our spring, we go back in through there and out the other side like that and then we just roll it over oh. 
And this one's going to be a tight one, I can feel it. So just roll that over. Now I hold the base like that and just you get that on the ledge. Just sit it on the ledge of your, your cap there. And we get our screwdriver, trusty screwdriver. And we slide that under and we're just going to lift that on the ledge. And there you go, that pops on. Same thing on this side. So I'm just going to slide my screwdriver underneath, get into the hole. I'm just going to pull up, lift on. Now it's lifted onto the ledge. Slide it underneath, lift on, bang, and then I just whack it. Bang. All done. Beautiful and tight. Very tight now. Absolutely no movement. Full of grease. We'll just get rid of that extra stuff there. That joint is ready to go. Now, next part is we're going to put the front bearing onto the crank. Okay, so in your little kit you get, Heinegger and, and this one are both the same, have the same things. So there's the new wave washer. Uh, now, the first thing that goes on is what we call the distance washer. That's just the flat one. Okay, so that needs to go on first. And as you'll see here, there's a little ledge there. Don't make, just make sure, I've learned from experience, not to have the washer there when you knock the bearing on because then the bearing jams the washer in there and then you'll have to try and undo it all to get that washer off. Okay, so just a little heads up. So we put the bearing on now. We get our little tool. The end that's more open and that slides down to sit on the middle of the bearing. I'll see if I can tap it down a little bit with this one. Notice I'm using the nylon hammer. Yeah, I didn't, um, I couldn't do it there. <laughs> so I've just done it over there. But as you can see, there's the wave washer and that just flings around in underneath that bearing. And that bearing's on there. Look at that, no movement, funny. Okay, first things first now. We'll just clean that up, make sure there's no grit on there. Because it can get gritty doing this job. I'll just move this out of the way. Nearly wipe my wave washer away. Okay, so we've got the handpiece barrel now. We need to make sure that's clean. So I've already given that a good clean in there with finger, but I'll just put that in there and just clean them all out there where that bearing's going to um, sit. Okay, so in we go. Just put the bearing in. We get our special tool here. This is what this ledge is for to tell you how far to go. But I'll show you a little tip. We'll knock that down. Just keep knocking around it. Don't go bullet the gate. Now you see I've left probably a mil and a half, two mil. Could go a touch more, just like that. That's the secret. If we go all the way to the barrel, yeah, to the barrel, then um, what can happen is the bearing may go too far. And same thing as I said before, um, is that the bearing will do what we call the binding up and pull everything tight and then you'll have no, no, um, what's the word? You won't be able to turn the handpiece. It'll run, it'll run smooth, but you won't be able to turn it, it's all jammed up. And if you've had that before, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I've, I've left the two mil from there. Next thing is the wave washer. So the wave washer, make sure that's clean. And then that goes in and just sits in there. Next thing is our sleeve. Okay, so that definitely needs a clean up. So this was quite hard to get out. It's quite funny, a difference in tolerances, so to from one handpiece to the other. There is differences in the tolerances. I'll just get this out of the way. Now, make sure it's clean in there. Now what I'll do is I'll spray it with um, inox. I like inox, it's good stuff. A lubricant but it's thin if we use 
oil, thick oil especially, bad news. So something thin, clipper oil could probably work as well. So the oil, little oil can or bottles that you get with the Heinegger Evos, that, that stuff's pretty good. It's quite thin. Um, okay, so we've got the sleeve there. Let's get rid of that. I'm just going to tap around. Once it lines up, it gets quite easy. Get my little tool, and I'm just going to push it by hand, just to there. And you can see I've got a little rim here. Next thing, the circlip goes on there and I'm going to just sit that on there so I'll squeeze it in push it on so you can see it's just on but it's not not actually in properly now the trick is this is how you make it so it doesn't go too far is you use this tool and we're going to knock that down now okay so I can probably do it by hand here I normally just do it over on the other bench but I'll just for here there we go. So as you can see, it only can go as far as the circlet can go down and then it goes boom and opens in its spot and that's it. So then it won't go as far as it um, as you can if you went all the way with this tool. So that's the trick. I think if Heinegger uh, made the tool with a slight extra mill on, the, on this ledge, then that would save a lot of dramas for people that have never really done it and assuming that that's correct. Anyway, I digress. Okay, so in the kit you also get your new seal. That seal has a little ledge here, just in there. That goes towards the back joint, and that catches any little bits of wool, and you'll find on the old ones, what's this one like? It's actually, oh, it's not too bad, but generally that little groove is full of wool, so you can get a little screwdriver, and then just pull all the wool out if you're gonna use the old one. Sometimes it's good to use the old ones again because that stiffness when you buy a new handpiece is generally because the seal's tight and it takes a lot of moving around while you're shearing to start wearing that seal in to make it loosen up. But there is a trick you can do before you put it on to make it looser. So if I was to put that on this back joint now, you'll see always that in first and that's quite tight. And if I get that on there... All right, I can feel that's tight to turn. Okay, so a little trick is I'm going to put my fingers in. I'm going to grab the ledge and pull it towards me there and do the same thing there. And I'm going to stretch it a little bit and just roll it around. Let's see, here we go. Look at that. Completely different. Okay, so I'll clean that up. Again, inox, good stuff. And then put the seal on, look at that, beautiful. And it should be a lot freer now to um, use straight out after the rebuild. We don't want stiffness if we can help it. Okay, then we're gonna put that straight on. Might need a little tap, and there we go. You can see that it's, it's all in properly. It's a lot freer than, say, a new one. You can generally tell if you've got a ferrule on or whatever and it just drops, even without one it drops. It's quite loose for a, a newly rebuilt handpiece. Okay, next thing, in our long repair kit, we're gonna use get the cogs. So I'm just gonna jam a screwdriver in at the crank. And we're just gonna screw the cog on. Pretty basic. One. The other thing is we're going to get the pin drive now, or in your case probably worm drive. Just just something while I'm doing that about worm drives. Uh, have a look here. Well, here's another one. Um, this is one I haven't used as a punch yet, but you can see the little curls. They've got. Uh, it's nearly worn through on each of these these curls. Um, that's why your handpiece generally gets stuck because it goes up too far because it's worn out too much. It goes up into the um, worm drive fitting too far and jams. So have a look at your worm drive. If you do a lot of crutching, you'll probably find that that's buggered. 
and if the worm drive fitting on your down tube is worn it'll wear this twice as quick as well and you'll get a lot of jamming so good idea to check that okay what to do with that pin drive there we go so we're going to spray the pin drive and then we're going to spray down in the rear housing there we're going to put the cog in sit it in there just get your fingers and hold it just jam it in there and then do it up now I don't know if many shearers actually know it's very important to um, put oil down in your ferrule and the reason why it's not just for your worm drive or your pin drive but as you can see here there's a little slit I don't know if many know that's actually there but that slit there is to let oil down and to dr slowly dribble down in through here to keep this part oiled while it's spinning otherwise you'll get a lot of heat in here okay so that's that um, so that's the back joint done now we can uh, get the ball I like to put the ball on first without the post in there it's just easy You'll find that the ball has two sides. One's got a slightly flat side, and then the other side's like a countersunk side. You can see that. I just whack a tiny bit of grease just in the front there, just to when it slides onto the crank, the grease gets pushed onto the crank as well, and that helps lubricate that. All right, now we get what we do now is we get the crank to the top. So you can see it there. I'll move it with my fingers. I'm just rolling the the cogs and then that crank can move around i'll get it to the top of the barrel and i'm just going to sit it on my finger like that make sure you get the flat end the flat end goes towards or up onto the crank so i'm going to go up sit it on the crank and there we go you would have saw that now make sure you don't tip it back that way the grease should hold it but the ball can fall out and you have to do it all over again Next thing is, we'll get the post and the nut. So the post, you'll see the nut's got a rounded area there. The post goes through the rounded part first because we want the flat surface to be uh, up against the barrel of the handpiece in here so it can, like, locks down tight. So we're just going to screw that through. We'll go about three quarters of the way, which is around, around that. That's generally where, because Heinegger is so good at their tolerances, that's around about where it nearly needs to be without, you know, maybe a quarter of a turn in it to get it right. Okay. No lubricating or anything. We're just going to put that into the handpiece and go like that. I like to use a normal screwdriver because that takes a little bit to screw in. Radio. so that's in make sure you just move that back and then do the nut up and then the nut ends up flat next thing we want the ball so the ball was at the top of the race now we want it to the bottom so there's the top we want to move it around and get to the bottom then we're going to grab the fork that we've done before and we're going to slide the fork in and then this part the race is going to go over the ball slip up and over the ball so go in over the ball if you can see that in there there it is in there and that's on the only other thing that holds it on there is our fork safety screw which is here somewhere okay i found it see that's in Good condition, probably one of the only parts that was still good. <laughs> Alright, we're going to put that into there. Now, be aware, do not put them on a cracky, crap, crappy angle and then start turning it. If it gets tight, do not force it. You force that through, that thread dam it gets damaged, this barrel is basically buggered. To re-thread that is just too hard. So we'll just screw that up so it's nice and easy. Do not over tighten them, they don't need to be tight tight, just a firm do up, that's it. Okay, so we're getting there, nearly there. We have the tension pin and sleeve, 
Now, this is getting a bit rusty from sitting in the reps car for so long. Anyway, first thing I do is get this pointy end and I'm going to grab a heap of grease on the end of it. Just like that. I'm going to put it in and I'm going to spin it around and wipe it off in there. Grease is good as long as you change it regularly. I'll get some more. Uh, when I was shearing full time, I just used oil because I was very diligent with changing or doing the oil. So I changed or squirted oil up into the tension sleeve every time I changed a cutter. Now a lot of people don't want to waste time doing that, then that's great. But you'll have issues with um, this if you don't change your grease regularly. Because what same as what I was saying before, can turn into grinding paste and wear, the, wear that out. Okay, so I've got that to the tip. You've got to remember, there's only that little tiny tip there. You can see there's no grease on that now. So if there's no grease on that and it's not changed regularly, that's not getting lubricated anymore. So you need to make sure that there's grease on that tip all the time. Or oil. Or well, I liked oil because it just, everything was um, cleaner inside. But each to their own. Okay, so I've got that greased. I'm just going to spray down into tension nut bushing screw and make sure it's nice and clean. And there we go. We'll put that in there. Now you'll see that the pin is here. I'll turn the handpiece over, bring the pin forward, and I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to sit it on the tension pin cup and then the spring, and then I'll just be able to push this and it will click in. There we go. Beautiful. Now, I could near bet my bottom dollar that if that handpiece before we rebuilt it, if we push this down in that situation there, that would have been inside this sleeve would have been down in here it was completely different length it had been worn so much okay so we've got that now i can really spin that but there's still a little bit of crap there so i'm just gonna spray it get rid of it now it's really nice and free that's really good okay so i've just cleaned out the tension nut give it a wipe with the rag then sprayed inox in it and then just tipped it all out so all the um, bits of sand and everything can just disappear into the bin. We're just going to put that on. This is all nice and clean and very smooth now. And now I can feel the tension. It's a bit stiffer to undo, easier to do up. Okay, the next thing, which isn't too bad, we'll clean up these screws I don't think they're too bad to really need to be replaced they're a little bit worn generally full of crap here if you're ever gonna um, want to use if you ever want to use these screws um, make sure that you you undo your comb as soon as you finish shearing with it so everything's warm and you can fit in there and then everything will undo easier if you wait till it's cold it's really hard to get undo and then you'll start really chewing out your your um, screws so there's a little tip for you undo everything as soon as possible so I'll just give that a bit of a wipe down these actually do a lot of a lot more than what people think so it's a good idea to make sure your screws are right recently I had one come in and they'd broken the screw into the thread we need to get that that out to actually keep going okay that's good enough. Now, good idea to spray it, a bit of inox into the threads. And then put them on. Nice and smooth. We'll try and um, see if they go all the way. Get all the grime out of all the way. See, that one's getting a bit tight there, so we're gonna really push that through. This one's going in a bit further. So you go in like that. That is a bit tight, but we'll get that to freeze up. Amazing how much grit and stuff gets built up in these things. Righto. 
right, so we'll take that out and then give it another spray. Right, oh, that's a bit better. And it's closed right up now. This one's already closed right up, so that one's good. So there's something else that people don't realise about just your comb screws. Okay, so we'll undo those again. This one will free up a bit better later once it gets used a bit more. Okay, now the tricky bit. So we can spin that with our pin drive, make sure it just feels smooth. Do it when it's upside down because when the fork's down like that, um, if you ever if you've ever had a comb and cutter fall off while you're shearing, you know what I'm talking about. It just sounds it's very rough. <laughs> Okay, so what we have is just a plain old comb, preferably a thick one so it doesn't flex when you do, do the tension up. doesn't need to be set up properly, just needs to be a flat surface. So screw that up. You can buy blanks, I think. I've seen blokes have blanks for these. So it's just a blank piece of steel with the same things and um, it does the same job. Uh, right, now... Cutter. So you'll get, if you buy a kit, like a Heinegger tool kit, it's got all the tools and it comes with the um, the three mil cutter and the setting gauge, okay? Very important. This was designed for a reason and um, make sure you use it. Setting hand pieces to certain thickness cutters is great in theory, but not ideal in practic practice as it doesn't take long for these to change length. Right, okay, we'll just put that on as normal. I'm just gonna just nip it up so I can still move the crank by the cogs. So I'm just turning the cogs. All right, just give it a spin there. I'm just getting the fork to be dead center, or the ball to be dead center at the bottom. Okay, if you can see, I'll move that. And then bring it back around and then there that's dead center what I'm gonna do is do the uh, tension up and just let it hang a little bit and then just give it a bit more all right don't drop it it'll give you too much so it's it's like if you've ever done a shearing school same sort of thing you just nip it up hold it to the side like this let it drop not drop literally just let it go down and then nip it up again that's mimicking shearing tension Okay, we'll get our gauge. This ledge at the bottom sits on the fork. So that's hitting the fork. Then the next ledge goes up and hits the barrel. Now you can see that it's not quite right. I don't know if, can we see that? Yeah. It's not quite going over the top of the barrel. And that's telling me that this post is too far out still. I need to go in probably a quarter to a bit over a quarter of a turn. So what we'll do, undo the tension a touch, and then we're just gonna nip that up. That's about a quarter of a turn. Then we do the same thing with the tension. We get the fork dead center again with the ball at the bottom, and then nip it up. Bottom ledge, and there you go. You can see that. That is pretty good. You should be able to go rocking, so you can see how my fingers are holding it. You don't want it to fall off, but you can just rock from one ledge to the next. That's telling you that it's perfect. If it's not right, it'll fall off. It'll want to fall off all the time. But there you go. So that's sitting pretty good. We don't want to see daylight through it. So you can see there, there's no daylight between that ledge and the barrel. That's what we want to see. We don't want to see daylight, okay? So that's nice and flush. So that's perfect. Next thing, I'm just going to do the tension up just a touch more. Also, just before you do everything, make sure those chicken feet are in properly. If you have a look at how those chicken feet are sitting, look at the, where's the pressure, right on the tip. Those other chicken feet, which I might do a thing in a second, I'll just set this and then I'll put those old chicken feet in and we'll be able to see the difference. So you can see the height of that fork you can see the pressure's going down to the tips of the cutter um, and the angle of it. 
So we'll do that in a sec. I'll just do this up. So tension's tight. Uh, get our spanner. It's a 5.8 spanner, by the way. I'm just going to nip that up. Keep an eye on that post. Make sure it doesn't turn. If it does, you may need to just sit it somewhere so it can clamp it and then put, hold a screwdriver. But Heinegger's are generally good. Uh, other brands, not so much, so you need to hold them. Get it firm. Don't over-tighten it because you'll actually break the post off. And some posts have a, a weak point, so keep that like that. Okay, we'll undo that now. Just a little bit. I'm going to spin it a few times. This is what I do every time. Get the thing again. I'm going to get the tension right. I'm just going to get that fork in the right spot. Right, tension. Okay, get our thing. Make sure it's the same after we did it up. And there we go. That's beautiful. It's rocking across, no problem. There we go. Okay, so that's set. Take that thing out. See if I can get these chicken feet out. Okay, I've got these old chicken feet in now. <laughs> you can just tell they're crap. Anyway, we'll put that on to the same cutter. And we'll screw the tension down. Now we look at the side. Remember what the other ones look like. You can see right, whoop, right back here. It's laying on the cutter, not actually sitting up on the tip. So if you remember that gap that we had before with the other chicken feet, this is why it doesn't cut so well because the pressure's back here now and not up here. So just something to um, keep in mind. Just keep checking your chicken feet. All right, we'll swap them back out. Okay, we've finished that. Take the comb off. Now, before we do anything else, I'm going to make sure that all these cogs and everything are tight. So I'm just going to jam the screwdriver in the crank again like that and then I'm just going to do up worm drive pin drive whatever and make sure when I do that that that's tight so what that does is does that cog up against the pin drive or worm drive and does this cog up against the crank pull that out now beautiful feels feels smooth that's done make sure the um, screws are up tight enough so they don't fall out and then I just center it there and do the tension up everything's tight this had an oil oil plug put that back in and then we can get the ferrule do that up just do that you don't have to go too hard and we are done officially done and the farmer will be a lot happier now so there you go guys hopefully that um hopefully you learned something there uh, i did too actually <laughs> didn't realize a handpiece could get so broken down and um and still be usable well i don't know if it was usable but now because the back joints were in good nick and i had a second hand fork we we're able to get out of trouble Hell of a lot cheaper than um, doing or buying new hand pieces, I guess. But it's knowing how to do it properly is the key. So if you do want it done and properly, give us a yell at Shearing World. We'll um, we'll sort you out. Even if you want to send them through, we do them. I do hundreds of them. I've done. I don't know. It'd have to be. I could be close to the thousands. <laughs> After working with Heinegger for a few years and and then training for so long, I've done lots and lots and I've seen lots and lots and. It could be something you'd rather do, like rather me do than yourself, but uh, there's only one way you'll learn and try it yourself. But we got all the parts and uh, you can get them from us online or in the shop. Thanks, fellas. Ladies, have a good one. Happy shearing.